Well, let's get more on UPS with uh, CFRA uh, equity analyst Stuart Glickman. Stuart, great to see you. Thanks for, for joining us. I mean, it, it was a very positive tone, I thought, uh, both in that portion of the interview and the earlier portion that we played during the day on, on the exchange. Yet the stock is down 8-9%, uh, the worst performer in the S&P 500. Why was the stock down? Uh, hi, Will. So I think that part of the concern that we're seeing in the market today is – uh, perhaps some skepticism by the market that the three-year financial targets that the company has laid out might be a bit ambitious. Uh, if you look at the cadence for how um, revenues and margins are going to make their way towards those 2026 targets, there's an awful lot of heavy lifting that takes place in 25 and 26. Uh, I would point out that some of that improvement is not really under the control of the company. Certainly, from an automation um, improvement towards more digital, things of that nature. I think UPS certainly has the ability uh, to expand in those directions and drive more productivity. On the other hand, the volume growth, I think, is a key piece of their platform. Uh, we really didn't see any of that in the fourth quarter of 2023. Uh, and so I think there's some concern that if the recovery in volume is slow in coming, so will uh, likely recovery in, in revenue per piece, and that might put some risk uh, towards those targets. So, so are we talking about a credibility problem with management, that people don't believe these new targets? No, I think it's... I, I wouldn't call it a credibility issue, Wilf. I would say it's more of a, a timing issue, if you will, that, you know, we're not really seeing near-term much in the way of volume growth. Uh, and so perhaps... Investors are looking for, you know, when is the inflection point going to be occurring? Uh, it certainly doesn't look like it's going to be in the first half of this year. They are suggesting that perhaps things improve in the second half of this year. But I do believe that the, the targets overall are somewhat ambitious. Um, and keep in mind as well that uh, the CapEx uh, guidance, 5.5% of uh, revenues between 2023 and 2026. Um, that also likely um, occurs with substantial capex in 25 and 26. That might put some of the free cash flow plans uh, at risk too. So, Stuart, finally, it, it sounds like you're saying in order for UPS's uh, guidance to work, they're going to have to really gain a lot of share in small premium. Uh, does that mean e-commerce ex Amazon since they've taken so much of delivery in house? What practically would have to happen in order for Carol and UPS to hit these ambitious targets they've set? Right, John. So I think yes, you have to have improvement in market share in small in small U.S. Uh, business. Uh, you probably need to take some share in international premium. Um, I think. The easiest way to get there um, is if the market volume overall improves as well. That's kind of the free lunch for both them and FedEx. Uh, but I think it may be slower in coming. So at the moment, we only have a three stars or hold opinion on UPS. Uh, and we actually have a two stars or sell opinion on FedEx.